Hi, welcome back. I am Nisha. Today we are going to talk with a new topic, function. So in programming, to solve complex problems, thousands of lines of code are required. So we break the larger programs into smaller subprograms. So in C++, function is a way to divide large programs into smaller subprograms. So through this video, you will get a clear picture on what is function and why this function and the syntax of function with example. So let us start. What is function? So first we can check the definition of that function. A function is a group of statements that together perform a task. So function means the collection of statements or we can say group of statements that we can put it in a block and we can give a name for that block for performing a particular task. So that is called function. Okay. So there are two types of functions. So the first one is there are some functions readily available for use which makes programming simpler. Each of them is assigned with a specific task and they are stored in header files. So it's already defined. It is in the header file. We can use in our programs. So these functions are known as built-in functions or predefined functions. So built-in functions or predefined function means it is already defined inside the header files. We can use according to our program. That is one type of functions. And the second one is we can define, means the user can define, the developer, the programmer can define functions for a specific purpose. So these are called user-defined functions. So we can give a name for that function and we can set a particular task for that function. So that type of function is called user-defined function. So understood what is function? Function means a set of statements. We can put it in a block and we can give a name for that block. So that is function. So these functions are divided into two. So one is predefined one and the other one is user defined one. Predefined means it is already defined. It is in the header files. It is in the library. So we can use according to our wish. And the user defined means the programmer itself can create functions. They can define name for that name for that function. That type of function is user defined function. So here we are going to study how we can define a function, the how the programmer is defining a function. Okay. So before getting to that function, so we can check why function, what is the use, what is the advantage of this function. See the points, reduce the size of the program. How we are reducing the size of the program? See the example here. Here school management software. It's a big task. Is it we want to control all the functions of that school? So how we can do that one? It's a big program. If we are writing all the functions in one program, means it is difficult. It's a complex one. So we can make it into small, small sub programs. See here, admission is one program. Second one is evaluation. And accounts is the third one. And the fourth one is staff management. So when we are splitting and if we are giving a name for each one is we are reducing the size of the program now. Okay. Now see the second point. Less chance of error occurrence. When the size of the program is reduced naturally the syntax errors will be less. Same like the chance of logic error will be minimized. Because we can concentrate only that particular topic. Is it? Yeah. Now the third point is reduce programming complexity. If we have properly divided the program into smaller units, the development of logic for the solution will be simpler. Then the last point is improves reusability. Reusability. What is the meaning of reusability? A function written once may be used later in many programs. So this reduces the time taken for the program development. 
we can reuse that function for the same program or for the other program. So these are the main important points for the function. Understood? Now we can check how to define this and what is the syntax of function. So the syntax of the function definition. So this is the function definition syntax. Same like main function. First we want to specify the return type. Then the function name. Then the argument list. It's optional. Argument list or we can call it as parameter list. Then brace open. Then the statements of that function. Then brace close. So here return type. Return type is any valid data type of C++. That means int, char, float, double, etc. we can use. Then function name. So user defined name. So user defined word. The user can define a name for that function. Any name. Then argument list. Which is optional. And it's a list of parameters. That is a list of variables preceded by data type and separated by commas. We can write any number of arguments here. That means number of variables. We can use the data type, variable, data type, variable by putting comma, comma. That argument shows the input data for this function. Okay. Now the body part. The body comprises of C++ statements required to perform the task assigned to that function. So what statement we want to do? What is the task of that function? That statements we can write it inside this block. So this is the syntax of user defined function. Okay. Now the function user defined functions can be classified into four types. The first one is function with no arguments and no return value. So no arguments and no return value. What is the meaning of this? A function has no arguments means it does not receive any data from that calling function. Similarly, it does not return any value to that calling place. Understood? That is function with no arguments and no return value. It is not receiving any data and is not returning any value. That is the meaning of function with no arguments and no return value. Then the second category is function with no arguments and a return value. So function is re not receiving any data but it returns a value to that calling function. Then the third one is function with arguments, with arguments and no return value. So this function is receiving data from the calling place but no return value. And the last one is function with argument and a return value. So it, return, it receives data from the calling function and returns value to that calling function. So these are the four styles or four categories. So we can use any methods for defining a function. Okay. Now we can check how to write this function. So there are three important steps required for user defined functions. First one is function prototype. Second one is function calling. Third one is function definition. So here function prototype means function declaration. The declaration statement. Before defining the function, we want to declare that statement. Same like variable declaration. Before using the variable, we will declare a variable. So, at the declaration time, we want to specify the details of that function. The details means the name of the function and its return type and the number of arguments with type. That is function prototype. Then the second one is calling. Calling means we know that no function other than the main function is executed automatically. So how we can execute that function? Because it's a sub program. So we are defining that function outside the main. So how we can execute that one? The main is the beginner and the end 
of that program. So how we can execute the function which is defined uh, outside the main function. So we need a calling statement. So the sub functions either predefined or user defined will be executed only when they are called from the main function. So that is calling step. Okay, now function definition. Function definition is, it contains the actual statements which are to be executed. That is the task of that function. That we want to define the function definition. So, these are the three important steps. The first one is function prototype, second one is calling and the third one is function definition. Understood? Function prototype means, that is the declaration step. Calling means that is the statement needed to uh, execute that function definition. Function definition means that is the actual statements to be executed for that function. Clear? So here we can check the syntax and the examples for each category. So the first category is no arguments and no return value. So function with no arguments and no return value. How we can write the function prototype and the calling and the function definition. See the syntax of prototype first. Void, function name, then empty bracket, semicolon. So here void means there is no return value. So the return type is void. If there is no return value, we can put the return type as void. Then the function name. Any name we can specify here. Then empty bracket. Empty bracket means there is no arguments. So here the bracket is for argument list. So here there is no argument. So we can use it as empty. Then the last is semicolon. It is compulsory for the function prototype. So the example. See the example here. Void sum. Sum is the function here. Empty bracket semicolon. Void means there is no return from that function. Got it? Then calling, calling statement. Syntax is just function name, empty bracket, semicolon. So here empty bracket means there is no argument list. Okay, function name, empty bracket, semicolon. See the example for the sum, how we can call the sum function, sum, empty bracket, semicolon. Okay, now see the function definition, syntax, void, function name, empty bracket. This is the header of this function. So, the same style only we wrote it in the function prototype. But in prototype, we want to put semicolon. Here, we are defining this uh, function there. So, don't put semicolon. So, inside that braces, we can write the statements needed for that function. Okay. Now, see the example for that sum. Void sum. The same header. See, void sum. The header is same style of uh, our prototype. Then the all the statements are there in the sum itself. A is equal to 10, B is equal to 20. We declare two variables for that sum function and the values also we initialized. Then in sum is equal to A plus B. That means the value of A and B will add it and store it in the sum variable and see out sum. So we will get a output on the monitor through this function. Understood? This is function definition. This is the style of function definition. Same like void main. Okay. But the user defined name there. It is not a main. Okay. It is a user defined name. So now we can check how we can write this in a program. Okay. See the example. Hash include IO stream. So we will write the prototype. The function declaration. So we want to specify at the top before main itself. Because main is the beginner and from the main itself we are ending the program. So before the main we want to specify the function prototype. Same like uh, header files. Then inside the main only one statement is there for the sum. Because we just see the sum definition that we defined outside the main. See, brace close of the main is there and outside we define the sum function. So, how the execution will move on to this portion? 
the execution begins here and end here so how it will reach here yeah we need a calling statement in the main then only we can execute this one so how we can write the function name see if it is no arguments and no return value the calling step is like this some empty bracket semicolon some empty bracket semicolon okay so it shows there is no arguments we are not passing any arguments to this function we are just giving a direction to this function so at the execution time it automatically moves to this function okay now int a is equal to 10 b is equal to 20 we got two variables a is equal to 10 b is equal to 20 then int s is equal to a plus b we got the result in s also see out s means we will get the output on the monitor then after this see the brace close then where it will go yeah it will move to the main itself the calling place itself but just below the statement of calling see yeah this is the brace closes the last statement here so it will move to the brace close part understood so this is the way of writing the function inside the program if it is no arguments and no return value we want to specify the function prototype on top and the function call inside the main then the function definition just below the main close, brace close understood now now we can check the next category <clears throat> no arguments and a return value no arguments and a return value here we are not passing any value but we are getting returning a value to that calling place so what is the syntax of function prototype see the syntax first we want to specify the data type of the return then the function name then empty bracket semicolon so there is a return value so we need to specify the data type there okay then last semicolon see the example yeah the same some function we changed into return style so int some empty bracket semicolon that means from some function we are returning an integer value that's why we are putting the return type as in here then semicolon this is function prototype then the calling step see the syntax first we want to specify the data type and the variable because we are calling the function and from that calling place from that function definition we are returning a value to that calling place so we need a variable for that value so data type space variable is equal to function name so through this function we will get a value to this variable so that's why the syntax is like this okay now see the example for this int s is equal to sum int s s is a variable we declared it here that is equal to sum so through sum we will get a value to s ok now see the function definition data type first then function name empty bracket the header is same style of prototype but without semicolon brace open then the body of the function see the last statement of that function return here we are using return value so here we are returning a value to the calling place so which value we are passing which value we are returning there so that data type we want to specify it here ok now see the example int sum see the header prototype is same int sum then int a is equal to 10 b is equal to 20 so two variables we declared here and we assign the values also then int s is equal to a plus b so the calculation a plus b then the result will store in s then this s is returning return s means we are returning that s value to the calling place we are not displaying on the monitor through some function we are not displaying the value to the monitor we are returning this value to the main function or to the calling place so s is an integer so the return type is integer because here we are returning s understood so now we can check the program same hash include iostream header file is there 
then the prototype int data type sum is the function name empty bracket semicolon then main begins int s is equal to sum sum function so here s one variable created with empty space sum we are moving to this definition part so moving now int a is equal to 10 b is equal to 20 two variables are there with values then int s is equal to a plus b so here a b s a is 10 b is 20 then s is a plus b that means 30 return s so here we are returning value s to the calling place to the calling place means here so we are returning that value to where to s okay int s is equal to sum so this return value will assign to here in this s variable so we got 30 in s now understood this is return style now the program is empty clear only the differences we want to specify the data type of return value at the calling time we want to specify the variable where we are returning the value where we want to assign the value so we need a variable here is equal to some function then we will move to this function all the calculations are here then we are not displaying the value on the monitor we are returning that value to the calling place so here we are returning the value to main and in main s is the variable to accept that value so s is equal to so we got the value of this s2 here in this s understood so this is the way of returning value state okay clear now the next is with arguments with arguments and no return value we are passing values but we are not returning any value that is the meaning of this one so how we can write the function prototype see the syntax void no return means void then the function name okay then in bracket we can write the prototype with arguments we want to specify the argument list here so the argument list is in prototype we want to specify the data types how many arguments we are passing that much data type we want to specify it here it's a character or an integer or a float value or a double so whatever data type we want to specify it here then last semicolon then see the example white no return sum is the function name then in bracket two integers we are passing the meaning of this is two integer int comma int means we are passing two integer value to that function sum okay but there is no return that's why we are putting void here now the calling statement see the syntax first function name then in bracket variable one comma variable two or we can write the values directly value 1 comma value 2 we can put the values directly or we can use the variables so these values we are passing to the function definition see the syntax sorry example sum a comma b sum is the function name a comma b means the value of a and b we are passing to the definition so this is the way of calling when you are passing any argument so the arguments we want to put it in the bracket now see the function definition void function name bracket open data type space variable comma data type space variable too so we want to specify the variable also here on the header but in prototype we are specifying only the data types but in the header the function header we want to specify the variable name also then brace open then the statements brace close now example void sum bracket int a comma b int a comma int b int a comma int b two variables are they two variables so that means in sum we got we will get two values the first value in a and the second value in b then in sum is equal to a plus b 
So these values we can add it and store it in sum. But we are not returning that value. We are displaying from here itself. So see out sum. So we will get the result on the monitor. Understood? So this is with arguments and no return value. So here we are not returning any value. But we are getting values from the calling place to this function. Understood? Now we can check the program. See the change. First header file, then the prototype. Void sum two integers. So int comma int, then semicolon. Then in main, inside the main, we are declaring the variables and we are assigning the values. If you want to input means you can input the values here. So these values we are passing to that sum function. So a and b are the two variables here. 10 is, the a, 10 is in a and 20 is in b. And sum of a comma b that means this a value will passing to here and a and b value. A both values we are passing to here in the sum function. So the direction moves to here. So that time when you, when you are moving the direction from the calling place to the function definition, the first value, the first argument a, the value of a will copy to the x variable. Then the value of b will copy to the y variable. So x and y are the two variables inside the sum function now. But it is in the header only because we are passing this to here. So x and y and here in s is equal to x plus y means the value is already assigned in x and y. See x is equal to 10 now, y is equal to 20. Then in the s is equal to x plus y means so 10 and 20 will add it and assign it s. So see out s. See out s means that value will get it on the monitor. So after printing on the monitor, the program is here the function is ending so we can return back to the main function because the main is the program ending place. So do move to here. Understood? So this is with arguments and no return value. No return. So we are displaying the value from here itself. But with arguments so we are passing the values to here. So the main has the duty to input the values. And the main is passing the value to that definition. So with this definition, the function definition do the process only. Understood? So this is with arguments and no return. Now the last one is with arguments and a return value. With arguments and a return value. So the function prototype syntax, data type, return value. So we want to specify the data type then function name then in bracket with arguments so we want to specify the data type here so comma comma by putting comma comma we can specify the data type then bracket close semicolon now see the example int sum bracket int comma int bracket close semicolon so this is the way this int shows the return value and this too shows the argument here sum is the function now calling step. See the syntax. First we want to specify the variable with the data type. Where variable all we can declare the variable first and variable is equal to we can use it here. So variable is equal to function name because there is a return value from this function. So that value we want to assign inside this variable. So variable is equal to function name. Then in bracket the values. So if it is in the variable, we can put variable 1, comma, variable 2 or directly we can write the values here. So see the example. Int sum. Sum is the variable here using. Sum is equal to sum s. See the difference in the name. S is capital here. So don't be in confused. Okay, we can use any other variables. So sum is equal to sum of a, comma, b. So in sum function, we are passing two values a and b and the value the one value will return to this sum variable from this function this is the calling style now function definition so first we want to specify the data type that means the return type then the function name then in bracket 
data type, data type. Two data types are there in the prototype. But in function definition, the header, we want to specify with variable name. So data type space variable name, comma data type space variable name. Then the body part. So the statements here. Then the last is return. Return, then the value. So we want to specify the value to return. So this values data type, we want to put it for the return type. Now we can check the example. See, int sum, bracket int a comma b, int a comma int b, two variables are they. These are the variables of some function. But we are declaring here, that means we will get values from the calling place. That is why we are putting it in the bracket. Now we got the values in a and b. So in sum is equal to a plus b. So sum is in sum, we got the sum of a plus b. Then return sum. So sum is an integer 1. So return type is int. So return sum. So this sum will return to the calling place. Understood the example? Now see the program. Hash include I use stream. Then the function prototype int sum int int. Two integer arguments are there and one return type integer. Semicolon, void main, beginner, brace open, int a is equal to 10, comma b is equal to 20. Two variables we declared with value. Then int s is equal to sum of a, comma b. So three variables are there. a, b and s. So in a 10, b 20, bus, but s is blank. So sum of a comma b, so the direction moves to the header with a and b values. So a will copy to x, b will copy to y. So we got two variables x and y, the value of a will copy to x and the value of b will copy to y. Now int s is equal to x plus y. So we get s is equal to x plus y, 10 plus 20, the result will copy in s. Then see the return s. So we are returning this value, this 30, to the calling place. Return s means we are returning this value to the calling place. So we are returning this 30 to this place. This place means here one variable is waiting for that. S is the variable. It's empty now. So after this function, after returning the value, we will we'll get that value in s now. See, S is 13. Understood? So, this is the style of function with arguments and a return value. The change is we want to specify the return type here and we want to specify the data types. How many data types we are passing? How many values we are passing as an argument? The data type we want to specify it in the prototype. Then the calling. So, if you are passing any value, First, we want to declare the value and we want to assign it or input it, then we can pass that value. If any return is there, we want to declare a variable for that to store. Then the function definition, then in definition, at the header itself, we want to put the parameters or the arguments. If two variables are passing, values are passing means we want to use two variables here. So the first value will store in first variable. Then the second value will store in the second variable. Then here do not forget to put the return statement because return type is there. It's integer. So here s is an integer. So return s means the value of s will return to the calling place. So at the calling place we put a variable here to store the value we are getting from the sum function. Got it? So with arguments and a return value. I hope you all understood the concept of user defined functions. It's very easy, is it? Yeah. In the coming video, I will show you how to implement this user defined functions in different types of applications. So, till then, take care. Bye. Thank you.